In this example, a piano is dropped from a tower 70 meters high. So here's our tower, and let's put this girl up here. She's climbed up to the top, and she holds this piano out here. and let's go. So this thing falls downward. Now even if you can't draw, and you don't have to draw a piano and everything, but you should be able to at least draw this. Here's your building, and there's an object falling down. Anyone can draw that. And you should draw a diagram of some sort because it helps you visualize what's going on. So unless it's just a really simple problem or one that doesn't require a, di a diagram, I would encourage you to draw a diagram. It's helpful to see what's happening. Now the setup of the problem is extremely important. Setting it up correctly is half of the battle. If you can set it up correctly, the solution always comes very simply after that. So in this case, we know the tower is 70 meters high. So you might think, well, I'll put 70 meters up here. But that's not the best way to do this. You could. But it will be better to do this. Let's call this point 0, and down here we'll call that point 70 meters. And when I've done that, I have decided that down is the positive, di positive direction. And in this case, my acceleration is going to be positive 9.8 meters per second squared. I've essentially set up a number line. This is the origin. My number line looks like this. Down is the positive direction, and up is the negative direction. You don't have to draw a number line, but you should draw an arrow with a little plus sign next to it indicating which direction is positive. And then it's also helpful to mark which direction is your zero point and then any other points of significance. Now I could have set this up another way. I could have done this. I could have put zero down here and 70 meters up here. And if I had done that, up would be my positive direction. And you should, you should see that zero at the bottom and 70 at the top is consistent with up being positive. And having a 0 up here and 70 down at the bottom, all of that is consistent with down being my positive direction. So you can set it up either way. This one is a little bit easier, the way I've set it up here. And the reason it's a little easier this way is because everything is positive. Um, my 70 meters is positive, the acceleration is positive, and positive numbers are just a little bit easier to work with. Now, um, just to make the point, it, this should make sense to you. Don't write this, but follow me through. I could have put um, 70 meters at the top. And if down was positive, that would have to be 140 meters. That would work too. But it doesn't make sense to call this 70 and that 140 when we could call, call the top 0 and the bottom 70. Or you could do this. If you called the top position 0 meters and you said up was positive, that would have to be, at the bottom, negative 70 meters. And again, you should see that that's consistent. Calling the top 0 and the bottom negative 70, that's also consistent with up being the positive direction. Now, the point here is that there's a variety of ways this could be set up. Some are easier than others. And hopefully you can see that this is just about the easiest way to do it. It's falling down. We'll call it starting point position 0. The bottom of the, the building is 70, and down is the positive direction. The fact that down is positive means that the acceleration is positive 9.8 meters per second squared, because gravity always pulls down. And in this case, down is positive. Now with those ideas in mind, let's set up and solve the problem. x0 is the starting point, but instead of saying x, I'm going to say y, just because when things are moving up and down in the vertical direction, I generally refer to that as y. If you think back to your Cartesian coordinate system with x on the horizontal axis and y on the vertical axis, we'll call this y. So I'll say the initial y position is 0. The acceleration I already have is 9.8 meters per second squared, 
and the final y position here. I don't know. You might think 70 meters, but what I'm trying to find is how far it's fallen after one second, two seconds, and three seconds. So I don't know how far it's fallen after one second, or after two seconds, or after three seconds. But I do know its initial velocity. The initial velocity is zero. That comes from the word dropped here. It's not thrown up or down, it's just dropped. So it's held out there and released. The initial velocity is zero. And I can use this equation, y equals y0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. And you recognize that as the equation for position based on time. The position of the object y at any given time t, if I know the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the initial position. The only difference here is I'm just using a y instead of an x, and that's fine. And again, I'm using y because it's vertical motion. Now I know that the initial position is zero, so that term goes to zero, and I also know the initial velocity is zero, so that term goes to zero. So my equation simplifies to this, y equals one half at squared, and that's pretty easy. I can just put in one second for t, put in 9.8 meters per second squared for a, and solve for y. The math here is actually pretty easy. When you do that, you get y at one second is 4.9 meters. And you can do that in your head. One second squared is one second times 9.8 is 9.8 times a half is 4.9. When you put in two seconds, you get y at two seconds is 19.6 meters. And y at three seconds, putting in the numbers, you get 44.1 meters. And you should be able to do that. You should be able to put the number in there for t, square it, multiply by a, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and multiply by a half and get those numbers. Well, the point that I want you to see is that the math here is actually fairly simple. All of the thinking, all of the physics, the, the thinking and the problem comes in the setup. Setting up the problem is usually half the battle or more. If you get it set up correctly, then the rest of it follows pretty easily. So with that said, keep this in mind. Taking the time to set up a problem carefully usually pays off. If you just try to whip through the math and get an answer quickly, you more often make a mistake. If you take the time to draw a little diagram and write down your given information and set up the problem, that usually helps you get it done faster and with fewer mistakes.